evening everyone and it is great to be back here on the uh, third edition of 2020 uh, somehow i love this uh, topic and it's it's progressing very well so uh, since communication is a very broad topic uh, it was a suggestion which came from prakash soon after last month's video recording that i should pick up a case study and i should focus a little on uh, on the communication aspects around that particular case and uh, what went right what went wrong what were the consequences uh, so i thought let me pick up the to topic as uh, uh, communication uh, communicating bad news uh, because that is something which is uh, very very critical very crucial and it is imperative that hr folks take it in the right spirit and uh, do the correct form of communication so let me pick up a case study Uh, this is a very popular case i do not wish to name the company because it's all done and dusted uh, but this is something which happened a couple of years ago maybe maybe two and a half years ago uh, when recession was uh, at its peak and this is in the it ites sector uh, there was one very well known organization uh, where an audio clip of an employee being terminated uh, due to an economic slowdown uh was recorded by the employee and it went viral on social media and uh, uh it, it the way it went viral is that uh it became a mockery of how the hr person had actually uh, done the entire conversation of uh, communicating termination to an employee uh so the way the the incident happened is that uh, the clip starts with the hr executive obviously a very junior person in hr Uh, she was doing as she was asked to do she was just doing her job so the audio clip starts with her uh, picking up the phone and talking to this particular employee who had recorded it and saying that uh, listen today is your last day uh, and in the evening just complete your exit formalities hand over your badge and your laptop and uh, you can go home uh, without giving any background so apparently this employee who is recording this conversation went on to take this uh, conversation ahead and started asking a lot of interrogative questions around why am i being terminated i know that my performance has been good and this is unfair and uh, why is this happening obviously he was asking a lot of questions because rightfully he he should be asking and it is right uh, and it is right to know so the hr executive there went on to respond to every question very bluntly uh, very curtly saying come from top management and i am here to convey this to you so uh, please go ahead and uh, leave today and uh, the conversation went on in this tone and at some point the hr executive started losing her patience and she said look this is what it is so you have to go uh, and then the employee obviously uh, said that he would take some action against it now here this conversation is something which all of us at some point of some point of time or the other in our hr career will have to do okay uh, communicating bad news happens it happens business has good news good business has bad news there are ups and downs and it is usually looked upon hr to do any kind of communication communicating good news communicating rewards communicating appreciation is very easy many a time that doesn't even come to hr to do it the business heads themselves do it but when it comes to communicating bad news it comes to hr and i wouldn't blame anyone for why it comes to hr because it is expected that we as hr professionals understand human psychology we under we empathy we empathize with people we understand those consequences before we speak anything right so that is the reason it comes to us so for for us if you ask me it is a matter of pride if a, if a task like communicating bad news comes to hr and people feel that we have the expertise to do it correctly and what went wrong in this case what went wrong is the hr executive was not communicating anything by analyzing the situation she was not communicating anything by anticipating the consequences and she was not communicating anything by applying her mind so analyze anticipate and apply it's completely missing in that conversation what she was doing is she was becoming a mouthpiece for others who could be her seniors in in the hr function and or could also be the business heads so what went wrong is that the hr person who actually did the job of 
terminating that employee was not speaking as herself she was becoming a mouthpiece of someone else uh can everybody go on mute please so when an hr person becomes a mouthpiece of someone else the consequences can be terrible because anticipating what can go wrong what can happen wrong does not happen there right so what could have been what so what is the consequence of all of this okay the biggest consequence of all of this is there was an absolutely irate employee who was made to leave the organization the guy who was terminated was absolutely irritated he felt he was wrong he had grievances against the organization and he left the organization with a very bad <coughs> now please understand who are the brand ambassadors of your organization not just your brand management team not just your marketing team not even just your uh, recruitment team who are actually uh, brand ambassadors they carry the brand to the candidates every single employee who is in the organization and also who is exiting the organization is a brand ambassador so look at it this way so this person when he left the organization he felt extremely hurt he felt humiliated he felt that he has been made to face injustice when he left the organization the human in him obviously created an outburst so the first thing he did is he made this audio clip go viral right that was his first way of what one could call as probably taking revenge against the organization where he felt he was wrong he made the audio clip go viral once it went viral it's you know once you send it out it's just out of your control it went viral it was all over the place it was discussed on social media and who faced the brunt the hr executive probably the weakest link in the entire hr ecosystem who carried out that conversation actually faced the brunt a lot of people started saying this hr girl does not know her job okay so word of caution here is if any of us is having to communicate bad news please understand where you are in the ecosystem if you think you could be the weakest link in the ecosystem be extremely careful do not jump at communicating bad news just because someone has asked you to do that understand the situation right analyze what the consequences could be and then apply your mind also as to how you would do it so the co another consequence of this this entire incident is even after this went viral uh actually a group got formulated with the labor department which was meant for the protection of it ites workers something like a labor union of sorts right so a, a labor union of sorts was something that could have been easily avoided now this is a group of professionals in it ites sector who don't really need a labor union for them to handle their grievances and their employment terms and all of that but unfortunately it happened and why it happened unfortunately because hr handled it in an inappropriate manner not exactly the same communication i'll tell you how great companies do it right economic slowdown happens recession happens uh, especially companies which run on projects where they cannot afford to have too many people on bench when their bench strength is increasing beyond what they what they are capable of managing they have to let go of some people right it happens so how does one do it and this is precisely how uh, we did it at at my organization and this is something which works really very well first of all i think one thing we all of us have to be very clear we cannot become judgmental in situations like this right we cannot take either the side of the organization the management or the side of the employee we have to learn to balance that is something which is that balancing the tight rope walking or whatever is part of our life right so we have to keep doing that we cannot be judgmental we cannot say that management says this guy has to be thrown out and that's so hence that's the right thing to do we cannot be judgmental at all and we cannot when we cannot be judgmental obviously we cannot communicate anything in that tone you can't tell an employee listen this is what it is hence you have to go that tone is absolutely unacceptable 
put yourself in the shoes of that employee who has been terminated or being called in for a termination meeting put yourself in the shoes of that employee for a moment you will feel the pain let me tell you you will feel the pain i have done many such conversations giving the things that it's not easy if you put yourself in the shoes of that person because please remember the axe can fall on your head as well hr is an overhead function typically it is not billable it's not a revenue generating department so any time the axe can fall on our head as well and it has it has happened many times right so do not keep a tone where you are dictating an employee saying today is your last day so get lost not acceptable so when you put yourself in the shoes of the employee how do you carry out this conversation give a message a very strong clear message to the employee that you have been an asset to us as long as you were with us however due to business reasons we cannot afford to have so many people and there are some criteria based on which you have been selected to be exited today or whatever so give that message very clearly and how do you give this message very clearly if you do it at, as a one on one conversation over phone it's usually ineffective of course when you are in a different city you have to you cannot do it in person but use video calling in video calling you can look at the person's face you can see the body language if you feel that the person is getting a little emotional or uncomfortable you can do something about it if you see the person but if you're doing it over a phone call it's terrible now when you're doing it in the same city call the person put a meeting request call the person who has to be terminated keep all the documents ready have have the entire employee folder in front of you you may have to refer to the clauses of the employment contract if he or she has a question he or she might have a question and has every right to be given an answer you cannot deviate that will just crash the credibility of the hr function also invite into that room friends which means somebody senior in hr if you are not senior enough and also somebody from the business side it has to go as a communication both from the business leaders and from hr it is not meant to be unilateral hr communication at all that was a first mistake that happened in that case that i was talking about obviously the second mistake is it was done on a phone call it was not done on a video call even and i don't think it was in a different city so it could have been done face to face so when you are doing it in a different city suppose you are sitting in headquarters in in let's say mumbai and uh, the employee is sitting in chennai and you have to terminate that person today and communicate bad news how do you do it one is set up a video call second thing is your colleagues from the hr function whoever is an hr business partner who is operating out of chennai let that person sit inform that person that this is what we are going to do in that conversation you just be there as an observer as a moral support in case this person becomes uncomfortable or uh, starts panicking you have to be there to support right so when you start the meeting also let the individual know why there are so many people here set the context very very clearly let the person feel comfortable that even if it is bad news here is an organization where i trust the methodology explain the context as to why you are terminating the person say that you have been an as said we really valued all that you did however we cannot afford so many people therefore we have used a certain methodology uh, your skill is very niche we don't see projects in the pipeline which needs your skill and it's not about performance clarify that several times that it's not about performance when it's really not about performance because a typical question that comes from an employee in such communicating bad news is my appraisal was fantastic and today you're terminating me what does that mean so before that question comes you should have your data with you ready enough where you say that we know that you were an asset and therefore your appraisal discussion was fantastic we gave you good increases as well however since your skill is not suitable for projects in the pipeline unfortunately i think we have to part ways well, right once you say that you move on to the next point talking about what happens next so when you're saying what happens next it is an expectation that the individual needs absolute clarity on what are going to be the monetary emoluments he is going to uh, receive uh, okay uh, so he is going to receive certain monetary emoluments you will have to go back and tell the person that 
based on your employment contract this is what you will get however since we are terminating you early we have decided to reward you with an excretia payment or whatever maybe but the point is be ready with all that information never assume that you can do the calculation later on as part of the f and f settlement it doesn't work especially when you're doing communicating bad news you have to have everything ready you may transfer the amount to his bank account a little later that's fine but you have to have the full and final working ready you have to explain it to him or her right there so that if he or she has a question needs clarification you should be able to give that answer then and there it shows a lot of preparedness you have for that discussion right once you do that you also need to give a letter to that person don't assume a standard relieving letter or a service certificate is enough especially when termination is happening due to an economic slowdown it will be great if you can draft a letter which says it's unfortunate that we have to terminate your contract on this date you have been a great asset to our organization we are doing this because of business circumstances however you will continue to remain one of our best preferred candidates in the future when a role which is suitable to you comes up put it in the letter hand over that letter and tell that person that this is what we have put in this letter for you and we really mean it it makes a big difference when you say what is there in that letter and you really mean it whatever you do or whatever you write or whatever you say it has to come from the heart especially when you're doing communicating bad news and believe me it stays with that individual for life i have known people who were terminated i terminated them with in this methodology uh, the next 3 months they had salary uh, they were paid for the next 3 months obviously so they were not thrown on the street that was one thing which they felt comfortable about and one of them even had a situation where uh, he was his wife was expecting a baby in the following month and he said today i am terminating me my insurance cover for this delivery would go what what would happen then and there i took a discretion and i said fine we will not remove your name and your wife's name from the list of uh, employees insured till the delivery is over give that assurance it doesn't cost much that's a battle you can always fight with the management because it doesn't cost much keeping the person and his family enrolled in insurance for another month if there's a genuine reason so go ahead and take such decisions then and there nothing wrong this is a goodwill gesture which does not cost much it does not cost any harm to the organization in terms of money but if the person goes a aggrieved employee can damage the reputation of the organization so think about which is better also another passing note for an employee when you're communicating bad news termination is that we hope and wish that you find another job suitable to your skills and please remember to give our names as a reference when you go for that job it gives that person a huge amount of confidence for the next job hunt because when you get laid off it's just like somebody is picking you from the organization and throwing you out of the window it's a terrible feeling and for a for a few days or maybe a couple of weeks people are not able to come to term to it as to what will i do tomorrow in the background when you say that you know people also feel that what will i tell the next organization that i'm ready to join immediately would it not make uh, put myself at a vulnerable state these are questions that come in people's mind so definitely sign off that conversation saying we are with you in this journey we hope that you find another job but remember to give my name as a reference and we will give a very good reference about your work wish him best of luck him or her best of luck and sign off that conversation not just that communication doesn't end in that room please remember communication does not mean only verbal or only what is written it's a lot beyond that when you're communicating bad news don't let the person walk away from that room alone ensure that you are going with that person to his or her desk help that person vacate if if he's been asked to vacate on the same day help him or her vacate his desk hang around there take support from friends as well let that person leave the organization with grace believe me when that person leaves that organization the moment he finds a job he'll come back he'll call you up and tell you look i found a job and thank you very much for being there for me in term, in terms of crisis 
so that friends is takes me to the end of my case study uh, on how to communicate bad news by analyzing the situation anticipating the consequences and applying your mind follow the principle of 3 a's here and you will you will absolutely ace the conversation right that's all that i had to say now we can open up for a few questions points of discussion anything that you would want to share uh, anything about the current situation the current crisis we are in open to it um, first of all thank you so much ma'am it was a really uh, very good case study from your end and uh, um i uh, learned the two lesson from that one is like uh, the giving a reference and another one thing especially the insurance case that you said about it uh, it should have a be the broad minded people would definitely would go for it and 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 as you said that the employee will be happy uh, again uh, to join us even in future sometimes yes really very good case study ma'am thank you so much ma'am i don't have any questions does anybody have any questions anything that you want to ask about uh, how to handle the current situation uh, also i'm good to go yeah ma'am probably uh, now we uh, due to this corona uh, probably as you said that uh, many of the companies are planning to lay off hmm lay off is it yeah uh, not the case uh, prakash i think people are uh, so uh, people are concerned about the business uh, business detour and uh, and mm. due to this extraordinary situation i think hmm. uh, i think lot of governments and other things are putting lot of effort in uh, oh yeah yeah in the status quo yeah. so it, mm-hmm. that, that there won't be any uh, layoffs and other thing i think uh, uh, i think it is yeah, it is uh, too early to comment about yeah but 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 i get a point now this gives me a trigger now because Pr- prakash brought this up uh, i'm very sure that there are many no, i don't want to name the company i know the news no, no, no. i get it i get it i get it i get it no but but prakash you brought a, you brought forth a very valid point now this is something which people will surely be uh, discussing uh, this is something which definitely could be a matter of concern to a lot of people so i think it's worthwhile uh, talking about it and understanding how to deal with uh, a crisis situation like this where the world has come to a standstill so obviously there it could lead to an economic slowdown it could lead to another big time recession it could it could lead to layoffs and probably that's what is the worry that many people have and which you brought out so one standing instruction here for anybody in the hr fraternity from my side would be that do not succumb to any of these uh, rumors or even if they are real reality and do not start communicating anything okay without making a plan so even if there are going to be layoffs even if that is true and let's hope that doesn't happen with many companies but yes smaller organizations may even resort to it now, even if that is true do not start communicating to anybody rather keep the communication going very very positive that things will change things will improve things will change for the better and it's all going to be fine keep that going till everyone's morale is good keep that going and when you have to really communicate layoffs go make a plan and the entire layoffs communication has to have a very detailed plan including who are the people who need to be laid off and why that has to be documented very clearly and hr is typically expected to support the business with that so start making a list of employees identify whom you will have to let go and also write down against their names as to why use an excel sheet it's very simple write down as to why because you should not make a mistake of picking the wrong person to lay off it happened in one such case Uh, we looked at somebody's performance alone it was consistently poor and he was on the list for being laid off and later on we dis- we discovered when we were trying to contact him we discovered that he is on a 6 month treatment for severe depression now if we communicate to him that you've been laid off he would have committed suicide anything could have gone wrong right so it's it's always important to do a lot of research some amount a great amount of detailed planning as to who are the people and why they have to be laid off and have it vetted by a group of people so that there is no bias so inserting bias interrupters there is very important so once you have that list decide when you will communicate to whom which employee when at what time and how make that entire detailed plan and who will be present in that conversation do all of that and only then start communicating the bad news till that time keep the morale up you can keep telling people that things will change for the better it's going to improve and there's nothing to worry 
even in a term in, in times of terms of crisis like this where you're anticipating layoffs it's, it's a good thing to anticipate it's a good thing to work with the business leaders on identifying uh, people because obviously if you cannot afford bench you cannot afford bench it's a good thing to find out if there are, if there are ways in which you can utilize them do all those research background work before you start the exercise of laying off Do we have any other question? Uh, Ma'am, Ramesh, Ramesh here. I have yes. a one question. I mean, uh, yes. when it comes to um, you know um, termination, uh, normally it should be mutual, right? So at times that some few employees might not be really comfortable in you know uh, in that situation. So Correct. they would still Correct. come back and you know request for some other time. Yes. Some, so how would yes. we? Um, because most of the time that the employer point of view that we we would be much worried about what what happens when it goes to the legal part i mean legal labor correct. related correct yes. correct so how would that correct. can be handled correct so uh, that yeah so that's exactly uh, why i was saying that uh, we cannot make it sound uh, by way of the communication we cannot mm -hmm. make it sound as if it is unilateral that is not acceptable that's unfair grossly unfair okay mm -hmm. so for it to be made uh, mutual there has to be a discussion and therefore this cannot be done over a phone call and in a hurry okay it has mm -hmm. to be a discussion right mm -hmm. and how it has to be a discussion that it should not be looked upon as something that hr is doing or a business leader is doing either of it is bad so when you address the situation as 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 partnering with the business mm -hmm. uh, you're actually setting the platform for it to be a conversation and it is not a unilateral decision the platform itself is set so the person is called into the room and he's been told that this is a business scenario and these are the reasons why you are in the list and that's why we have to ask you to go do you have questions let give that person enough room to ask his questions give his side of the story i have known people who have told me that i know a project is there in the pipeline i got to know but you're telling me it's not there let that person ask those questions validate your answers also you can have the business leader answer and if he wants it has even happened in one case where we had uh, multiple business leaders because it's a large complex organization and he took another person's name we called that person immediately into that conversation and said this is what he's saying is that true if that is true then we shouldn't let him go let all these conversations happen transparently then and there it's 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 a tip, it's a probably not a great idea to say i'll come back to you and you say i'll come back to you one is they don't know if we'll ever go back to them that's a very old joke about hr second thing is they also get a feeling that you're doing some conversation behind their back and in a and, and in a situation like that when you're laying off somebody it's not a great idea to let them feel betrayed right they're already feeling betrayed you can't let that emphasize so do all the research so you know that there cannot be a change okay and whoever whoever that person wishes to talk to get that person into that room or on a call in that conversation have a live conversation there so the person is absolutely satisfied that you have been fair and once the person knows that you have been fair from your side and this is not unilateral very easily the uh, the employee will cooperate in that entire exercise mm -hmm. and and exactly like i say it's not the just the exercise the cooperation goes way beyond that the person leaves the organization comes back and tells you what's happening in his or her life stays in touch with you and says mm -hmm. that this is a great organization that i was i was part of mm -hmm. so keep it as transparent open and and then and there as possible mm -hmm. um uh, just just one other add on ma'am so so because uh, assume that if the you know uh, the employee is fine to you know uh, get relieved and all but at the end of the day from hr point of view we need a, a, a resignation letter do you think uh, is that really mandatory when it comes to termination or no. without that go ahead right? no okay so so okay voluntary exit needs a resignation letter correct okay? when you are terminating the contract or the employment mm -hmm. don't ask for a resignation letter and i'll tell you why a lot of organizations ask for a resignation letter which is which is right. actually legally incorrect uh, so, i have a legal counsel friend of mine and i have discussed this at length with her a lot of organizations ask the employee to resign because on voluntary resignation the employer does not have to pay shortfall in lieu of um, the notice period shortfall in lieu of notice period exactly. shortfall to save that money employer say please resign hmm. that's unfair 
if an employer is terminating the contract be ready with the full and final state statement saying that we are terminating your employment therefore we owe you 3 months salary 90 days salary or whatever whatever is there in the contract keep that mm-hmm. ready and say that we owe you that don't try to cut corners there that's unfair because if that goes to a labor court it will completely backfire on the employer you can ask an employee to resign actually you can't resignation mm-hmm. is always voluntary mm-hmm. if the employee wants to resign he or she can resign but we can never ask the person to submit a tender or resignation that is actually doing something under duress and that's absolutely unlawful oh, right 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 so it, it, it's a, it's a great idea to actually uh, take some time read through the typical appointment letter clause by clause in in your organization mm-hmm. uh, uh anticipate situations that could be there do some simulations within your hr team uh, and try to do some mock uh, you know sessions with with the team uh, practicing on what will happen if an employee behaves like this which clause will you utilize you know things like that and that becomes very easy when a real life situation happens so amongst hr teams instead of having general fun conversations try to challenge each other by putting such mock situations in practice and see what each team member has to contribute you might find a fantastic idea which a team member might give also right mm-hmm. right uh ma'am this is preeti um i have a question in this regard uh you said uh, while uh, while the employer or the while the hr asks the employee to resign uh not most cases uh, i don't i'm not too sure if it is to cut corners but it is to ensure that um, when the employee goes for another job and when there is a background verification that happens uh so he will not get a job if it says the employer had terminated his contract so it could also be this interest that um, we may give that option to say um you know if you resign voluntarily you know it's easier for him to get a job now i don't know if this is right or wrong but yeah, there's but, also but, this but, aspect of it which i thought i should bring it up and say very it is fantastic uh, fantastic ma'am, uh, point prakash here ma'am prakash uh, here i second uh, what preeti said this is what we most of the hrs do over it <laughs> perfect perfect i i just i i love this point actually fantastic thank and you so much thing, uh, preeti excuse me mm. harini ma'am uh, one mm. more point on that i think uh, whatever the point the uh, preeti said the point is that uh, because uh, we will do that particular transaction of that uh, uh, of that counsel out uh, part uh, mm. later all this uh, resignation letters and other things are handled mm. after the garden leave mm. thing right so mm. the mm. hr operations team used to send that so uh, mm. for them this resignation letter is a valid document to go ahead for a uh to hmm. release the particular letter after their garden yeah. leave and other things so that's a hmm. source of an uh, document so okay. uh, in my view the uh, the resignation letter is very very important to those okay okay still the resignation letter need not be uh, the the document that is required uh, by the operation team so let me let me just break this into pieces this is but this is a brilliant question and, I, and i'm so glad that you brought it so when we summarize this uh, uh for the benefit of people who could not attend i think this is a question that really needs to be taken to the people so uh, i'm sure gayatri was making a note of it so uh when an so the first worry is yes he's been an asset and we now we are letting him go so how will we help him get a next job is this termination going to impact him one is do not worry it all depends on how you word that relieving letter okay uh so a lot of people uh, from uh, middle east were uh, terminated 4 uh, 5 years back uh, when the when there was a big time oil recession and i saw a lot of a lot of multi uh, multinational companies also I, i noticed that they don't really ask the person to resign but they give a letter which is full of grace gratitude and everything and it very clearly tells that you have been an asset but the business could not afford you because we don't see projects coming our way which utilizes your skills you continue to remain one of our favorable associates we will come back to you the moment we have another position open for you put a lot of be generous in putting those words in the letter that is more than enough for that person to be able to find a job for himself right nobody is going to make any judgment but yeah but if you use a word saying this is to inform you that your services have been terminated with effect from this date obviously that's not good enough so be generous 
when you're praising that person, even if you're terminating the contract. And never use the word termination, even if it is due to gross misconduct, if you're terminating on the same day, not necessarily due to recession, even then, do not use the word termination in the letter. Termination is something which is which can be construed in different ways and uh, you can end up being pulled into the labor code for interrogation as to how why did you terminate did you did you give a show cost notice and all of that so never use the word termination you can say that for the above reasons you have been discharged from services when you're saying discharge from services it obviously means you're not attaching a stigma to that person's career so even if you're terminating somebody due to gross misconduct you cannot damage that person's career. You can make your environment clean by asking him to go. Okay? Suppose somebody has stolen something and it's proved. Okay, You cannot say that I'll do something so that you never get a job. None of us have the right to do that. Okay, We can only make our environment clean. So never use the word termination. If you're sending out the person due to business reasons, be very generous so that with your word so that he or she does not lose an opportunity outside. Now, how does your HR operations team understand that they have to take this case as a, uh, you know, with full respect when they process the F and F formalities is all such cases do not postpone it till the end of the notice period or whatever. Process these uh, cases, calculations and all that right in the beginning. Let it be part of your plan. Okay. So that they get it. Uh, they get all that is due to them very early. Now, suppose you're sending them on a garden leave for three months, the entire notice period. Let them remain on the payroll till the end of it. At the end of it, ensure that you're giving your operations team uh, what we call as a as a, uh, exit advice. There you clearly articulate the reason that employment contract or, or discharge from service due to business reasons or something like that. So that they know that this person has to be given the necessary documents, relieving letter, service certificate and all of that. But resignation is not, not the way at all. So in fact, that is not uh, lawful. So avoid that practice. Do we have any other questions for now? Please, yeah, once yes. again, thank you very much for uh, that question. I'm, I'm really uh, happy you've got it. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Ma'am, I also have another question. Uh, yes. This is pertaining to the current situation. Uh, mm. Now, um, while Prakash asked about layoff, uh, mm. not many companies are ready to give 100% work from home to their employees. Though it is so, they call it as a recommendation, uh, yeah. and the reason being that if they give a hundred percent work from home, and uh, mm. later on, especially the services company, I mean, uh, the company, uh, I don't know how to put it, but uh, you know, mm. there'll be a uh, we'll have to once the situation is uh, sorted out and once everything gets to normal, uh, mm. there'll be questions of uh, you know, in terms of uh. Asking if we really need so many people at work, you know, mm. if it mm. is necessary to get back to work, if it is necessary that mm. we should have an office, and mm. such questions will come up. So yes, what, absolutely, absolutely. So, so while yeah. these things come up, um, you know, as a HR, it's a very uh, difficult situation right now whether to talk in terms of the safety of the employees and. Uh, you know, uh, uh, ask the management to shut down the operations for a few days, or I don't know. Either ways, it could harm the uh, livelihood of the employees. Absolutely, so absolutely, you, absolutely. So now, this is yeah, this is a fantastic uh, situation to be in terms of as a, a learning uh, because uh, here it is uh, you know a dilemma between the devil and the deep sea. Either way, you're saying that that could be a problem. The first point is. Uh, one of the things is that when you're doing work from home, okay, there has to be a way in which you can measure work from home. Okay. So put those monitoring practices in place so that people are, who are working from home are really working from home. And if you're able to measure and monitor people's deliverables when they're working from home, then there is no fear that a consequence can happen as to why you're having so many people. That question will never come because you're actually demonstrating that they have work to do and they have worked from home right so from an hr side ensure that people who are doing 100 percent work from home are only those roles 
where they can work from home and you can measure and monitor that. Their managers will measure and monitor. As long as you have a framework in place, that is fine. Now coming to, sometimes organizations can come with a question saying, do we need such a big office? And I think that's a fair enough question. With the reality rise, uh, prices going up so much these days, it's a fair enough question. Then I want organizations to start thinking about office economics. That's a lovely subject for me. They have to start looking at it. So maybe we will move to, when we're move, moving towards the future of work, maybe we will move to a situation. Maybe this is nature's way of, uh, though not very nice, maybe it's nature's way of helping us move to that future of work where we know that we can have lean offices, we can have some of the roles which are completely done remotely and we will start building systems around that to make that a robust practice. Nothing wrong in that. What goes wrong is when people are working from home, so when people start working from home, many of us take it for granted that we can be a little uh, callous about uh, office deliverables. We can do cooking with one hand. We can do, uh, you know, having fun with family on, on one side while we are working. Never do that. When you're working from home, if it's a nine to five role, ensure that you create an office space for yourself. And when you're doing your nine to five role, ensure that you are properly dressed. Even if you're not going on video calls, I would still recommend that you're properly dressed you're properly seated like you would be in your office so that your 100% is on the job. Of course, you can take a couple of more stretch breaks when you're at home. But the major difference between working from home and working in an office is you're avoiding that commute. Apart from that, in terms of your focus, in terms of what you look like, in terms of uh, how much time you're spending at work, in terms of what you are doing at work, whom you're talking to and all of that, there should be no difference. The problem happens when we as employees start misusing these things and somebody or the other in management is smarter than us. No? They can also see through it. So when they see through it, they start asking these questions. But if you're diligent in your deliverables, if you have a methodology to measure and monitor, there is no fear about lo loss of jobs. There could be instances where offices will become downsized, which is good. Then your organization is spending less, which means they will save more money, which is anyways going to come back to you as better salaries or better perks. So the, the organizations probably will go through a huge change. There will be a paradigm shift after this crisis is over and the future of work is going to become a prevalent thing. A lot of us forget what it means to work from home. Work from home does not mean you can enjoy family time. It only means you're avoiding commute. Remember that. <laughs> Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. Anybody Thank else? So, but I think uh, because of all this crisis going all over the place, a lot of our people could not join. So I'm sure we should be able to share with everybody and uh, you know, for the benefit of people who did not join, this, has, this, this whole recording needs to be shared uh, quickly. So I'm sure uh, Gayatri and uh, Prakash will do that. Thanks a lot. Sure, ma'am. Sure, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you so Thanks much for everyone. your valuable Thanks time. Thanks a lot, everyone. Yeah. Bye-bye. See you next month. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye. Stay safe. Bye. Once again, ma'am, hard thanks to you.